Hey, welcome to part two of my procedural nodes videos in Blender. This is supposed to build off of part one, which I'll link in the description. So you can start off on this one if you feel confident, but if you don't understand what I'm talking about, just check out part one. And in part one, we explored the texture coordinate node and a, a few of its outputs. And then what we did is we made these six basic shapes and then played around with them and just tried to tweak them a little bit. Let's take a look at the texture coordinate node again, just briefly here. If you recall from last time, uh, we were just looking at the texture coordinate on a plane, and now I've got it on a cube. So if I orbit around, you can see it's got a few more color dimensions there. And last time we were just looking at the plane, and uh, it gives us the same image as looking at the cube from the top, just like right now. But if we go down here, we see these other colors, and I'm just going to add in a separate RGB node to make more sense of this. I'm going to take a look first of all at the red level there. So we see that the red level on the left there or in the negative direction of the x-axis which is labeled in red uh, that's black. So that means zero and on the right of the cube it's a one. So if we switch channels we should see this side of the cube going black which we do because that's the negative in the y direction which is the green axis. And then finally if we go to the blue channel, we see the bottom is black because that's the zero for the Z channel. Another thing I want to add is that when we're looking at the Z axis, it uh, actually goes from one to zero again on the uh, entire scale. So there is no negative on the Z axis either. Next up, we're going to take a look at the UV output of the texture coordinate node. And uh, this guy, uh, I was pretty confused about this at first. I was looking at this and trying to make sense of it and uh, yeah, it wasn't really making a lot of sense. I plugged in the separate RGB node and I saw that X there's pretty much no negative, well there is no negative values and there's no zero values there as well. For the Y there's some zero values and then for the Z it's all zero values. So then I figured out that uh, it makes a bit more sense if I open up the shader editor here, or pardon me, the uh, the UV editor here. And I'm going to go back to the red channel, and I'm going to tab into edit mode, and we can see up in the top left here in the UV editor that the way that it's laid this out, there's no squares or no vertices touching the left side of this image here. And that's why we don't have any zero values for X. If we were to drag this over, you see that there is some zero values now appearing for X and it actually gets quite dark there. So that's why this looks a little different. This actually opens up a lot of customization though because you could take each face and then move it however you want it on this uh, area here and just make a very customizable pattern here. But it's still a little confusing to me so I'm just going to leave that for now and we're going to move on to the next one. Okay one thing I just realized is that uh, if we're plugging into the blue channel when we're using the UV output on the texture coordinate node, uh, it should, I think, probably always be black because when we look at the UV editor, there's only an X and a Y axis and there's no Z axis. So uh, that's what I'm thinking is uh, probably the UV editor is, is probably going to always generate black for the blue or Z channel. Now we're going to take a look at the object output and this one, uh, you know, it's it's a lot simpler to see what's going on here for me, and uh, it's just basically uh, very similar to the object output in the other one. Let's take a look at the separate RGB node here, and we can see that when we plug into the red, it's just half the cube is positive on the white side, and half the cube is negative. Same with the green, and same with the blue. So uh, this one's a lot easier to get a handle on, and once again, if we wanted to you know, have a different object controlling where this origin point is. We could move that around, like in the last video I demonstrated, and have a whole bunch of options open up to us. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and use this object output for most of the shapes we make today here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try making one of those shapes that I made in the last video on the cube. We'll just kind of see what happens. So I'm going to start with a separate XYZ note, and then We'll add in a math node, change this to absolute, and we'll just duplicate that and put it on the y-axis as well, and then move another math node over here, change it to add, 
plug that guy in and then one more math node and change it to greater than and uh, then we've got a diamond but uh, it's not on every side it's just on two sides it's on the Z axis kind of so basically where we plugged those nodes in it just kind of appears where those axes or those axes are flat so if we want to do these on the two other sides what we can do is just move these up and duplicate it and then we'll do the X and the Z we'll just mix these together here change this to multiply and then change the factor to zero or pardon me to one and then we've got the diamonds on four of the six sides so let's just do this one more time we'll do the Y and the Z this time there we go and we'll mix these two together here and then again just change this to multiply in the factor to one and now we've got diamonds on all six faces there let's try just varying them a little bit here we'll just change this top one we'll just change it to uh, just that circle there by changing both of these to power and the exponent to two and then uh, we'll add one more node in here which is a square root node just to tighten it up a bit okay so now we've got two circles and four diamonds and we'll change this bottom one here we'll go greater than and we'll change this to power and change this to two oops go and then plug this into here and then we'll just plug this into the mix node and okay um, let me just back that off a bit here go to less than okay cool so now we've got a circle on the bottom you know two diamonds and then the parabola that's kind of taken over the other side but uh, yeah you know it's just uh, playing around with this stuff here you could probably find a better configuration than this but it doesn't matter you know just kind of trying to understand how these notes work you know you might be asking yourself well what if I only want one diamond and I don't want a diamond on the other side so let's take a look at how we would do that um, this is just something I figured out myself so there might be a better way to do this but uh, I'll just show you the way I've got so far I'm gonna duplicate this diamond texture move it up here and I'm gonna actually make it uh, the same uh, just running off the same coordinates here, the X and the Z, just like this here. So this should be the same kind of thing, just diamonds there and diamonds there. So those are the same so far. Uh, but I'm going to change this top one to a leaf pattern. So now we should see leaves. Okay, perfect. And then just make a bit more room here. And then I'm going to make another math note here and uh, this is going to be used to mix both of these here these textures the leaf and the uh, diamond so I'm gonna grab another one of these mix RGB nodes I'm gonna plug it in here and this one's gonna be plugged into the bottom socket there unplug it from that second guy and this is all gonna go into this one here um, I'll just leave it on that viewer for a second here and instead of multiply we're going to change it to mix and just change the factor to 0 0.5 well actually the factor doesn't matter because this right here is going to be controlling our factor we're going to change this to greater than we'll see if that works and um, probably just going to change this to zero and then we'll take the y value here plug it into here and then plug this into the factor and there we go that gives us a diamond on one side and a leaf on the other and the reason let's take a look at this node for a second so what we're getting here is we're getting one half of the object is black and one half of the object is white in other words this black is equal to zero and this white is equal to one so when we plug that into the factor here that allows us to have this texture set up right here this uh, leaf it's plugged into color one and then uh, when it's black that's gonna be on this side so we look at that there's the leaf and then when it's white it's gonna be the diamond so anyways we got that plugged in let's plug it into the whole thing here you can see we've got our leaf diamond and circle there 
All right, so our node group is starting to look a little complicated. It's not really as nice to look at as it once was, and we should probably organize it a little bit, make it easier to look at. I'm going to go ahead and grab these nodes up top here, and I'm going to put a frame around them. So let's do that. It's Control J is the uh, shortcut there. I'm just going to move that up here. We can just see it says frame. So to change that name, I'm going to hit N, bring up this shelf here, and we can just type in a new name here. I'm going to name this circle because this is controlling the circle on the bottom. So there we go. Now we can move this frame around and all those nodes come with it, which is kind of nice. So another thing we can do is hold down Shift and right click and drag through some of these node branches. We can create these intermediary points that just allow us to you know, make it look a little nicer there. So I'm going to do those two things to this other setups here. This guy here is the parabola. I'm going to hit Control J to join that and just call this parabola. There we go. And then go ahead and hold down Shift and Control and just move those around. There we go. And this guy here, that's controlling the diamond. So let's go ahead and name this diamond. Go ahead and move these guys over here. And then these guys here are controlling the leaf. So let's go ahead and name that. I'll just move those over there. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to move these a little further apart here. So we can add a bunch more if we want. Alright, so already this is looking a little more organized. We got the circle on the top. We got the leaf, we got the diamond, and we've got the parabola. But there's still some organization issues surrounding this note here. I find this really confusing to look at, and I think that's what we should tackle here with our organization next. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make three of these separate XYZ nodes here. Just plug them all into the object output of the texture coordinate node. And then we're going to have this top one controlling this top node group, middle one controlling the middle node groups, and then the bottom one controlling the bottom node groups. So to set those up, I can actually just plug in right to these intermediary points here. Take a look, it's the X and the Z, so I'm going to go ahead and go right here and right here. And then we're going to take this Y and plug it right in here and unplug this one here. So it's a good start. And then we're going to do the same to this one right here. That's still the X and the Z. So right here and right here. OK, it's getting a little clearer. And then we're going to do the bottom one here, which is going to be the Y and the Z. So let's do that. So Y in here and Z in here. OK, good. I'm going to move this way down. I'll just move this way down as well. Okay, it's getting a lot easier to look at now here. And I want to change over this. Oh, I just noticed the parabola is on the wrong side here. I think I know what this is. I just need to swap these values. Okay, there we go. Now we've got the parabola on the top and the circle on the bottom and the leaf and the diamond. Okay, so we're going to customize this a little further here. I'm going to take this parabola out here. I um, just want to change it around. It's kind of taken over, so. Let's go ahead and change this to, we'll use this diamond here. I'm going to duplicate this, bring it down. We'll just connect to these intermediary points here, just like that. Move these down here. And I'm going to duplicate this again, move it right here. There we go. Move all this down. We're going to duplicate this greater than node here, bring it down here, and we're going to plug in this X right here, bring a mix shader node down here, plug this one in here, plug this one in here, and plug this one in here. Oops. I'm going to do that shortcut. Alt, right click, drag. That's a good shortcut. I haven't really been using it. 
but it's super useful. Uh, I've just been trying to keep the stuff simple, but it's really, really useful for these nodes. So right now, these are the same shape. I'm just going to modify one of them, adding in a math node here. We'll change this to multiply, change it to uh, 2. So that should make some of these diamonds a little fatter or skinnier, depending on your... Yeah, there we go. Cool. So we're going to mix those two together, just like here. One fat, or one regular, one skinny. And then we're going to plug this into this mix node here. Take a look. Now we've got a skinny diamond on one side, two regular diamonds, a leaf, a circle, and another circle. All right, so I guess we got to change up that other diamond there. It just looks a little boring. Um, let's go ahead and just add in another math node here. We're just going to change this to add and put it to 0.2. So, or 0.5. There you go. Now it's on the edge. So, um, yeah, edge diamond, regular diamond, leaf, circle, skinny diamond, circle on the bottom. Let's tackle this top one here and duplicate this circle here. We're going to just make another circle right here, duplicate this greater than node, move it up here, and this is going to attach to the Z output right there. We're going to make another mix shader and just plug this into the factor, Ooh, just like that there. We'll plug this into the top and this into the bottom there, and then we'll plug this into this right here. Okay. Uh, this one we're just going to make a bit bigger. Why don't we do that? And okay. What's going on here? Oh, should be two. Here we go. Something's still looking a little weird. Okay, so that's a circle. This is not a circle. Why is that not a circle? Oh! I guess that makes a difference if it's plugged into that bottom power right there. So we've got a lot going on now. We've got a leaf on one side, a regular diamond, a regular diamond that's been pushed to the side, a skinny diamond, a big circle, and then just a regular circle. So this node group on the left here uh, is just controlling basically all these sides making six different shapes and this has gotten a lot bigger than what we started out with uh, hopefully you can still understand everything and if you can you know that's great uh, we've come a long way from that first simple node group so I think that's all for today uh, I think this is enough material to work on and just uh, experiment with we use that texture coordinate node and, and separate RGB or XYZ pardon me and just math nodes to create all these different shapes and just vary them and also how to control each shape on each side.